as you can see, it's quite a large Excel file. And this is because the Lycor takes a lot of different measurements and you can actually do a lot of different analyses using the Lycor. But for our ACI curve, we're really interested in only three of these columns. So I'm going to show you which these which columns these are. I'm going to highlight them for you. Um, first of all, we have to scroll all the way over to JC. And I'm going to highlight that in yellow. Um, let's go back to J. That is the other column that we want. And L. Okay, so now they're highlighted. I am going to copy and paste the data from those three columns into another little table over here because that is the important information that we actually want for our ACI curve. Pop it over here. It doesn't matter where you put it as long as it's all together. It's much easier to use with this A column. And we need to paste the values because it's actually based on a, another formula. And the same with this one. There we go. So this is the amount of CO2 per mole of um, air and how many micromoles per mole of air um, of CO2 that we are putting into the air that we run over the leaf. This here is how many micromoles per the leaf area that the um, that has actually been taken up by the leaf. How many moles of CO2, sorry. And this one is the um, estimated or calculated intra, intercellular concentration of CO2 within the leaf. So there's, that's actually a particular formula that's widely used in the photosynthesis research field. So now that um, you know which columns to grab, I want you to go and do the same thing with our other two replicates for our C3 model plant, Benthemiana. So I'm now going to show you how to make a scatter plot, which is what we use to do our ACI curve just with this replicate one. And then we're going to compare our three replicates to see whether our plants were behaving as expected and that the Lycor was also behaving how we um, expected it to. So we go to insert and insert our scatter plot. And now we need to select our data. So we go to select data. We're going to add one series and our series is going to be called Benth Rep 1 in the X values. So along the horizontal, we're going to put the values for our CI column. And for our Y values, we are going to put the values for our A column. Now remember A is the amount of carbon that's been assimilated and CI is the uh, calculated intracellular um, concentration of carbon dioxide. Okay, so we'll hit okay and there we go. That is our um, ACR curve for our first replicate. What we can do is we can put a trend line in by clicking on any one of these little um, dots, going out to add chart element. You want a trend line. Um, I'm just going to select linear for now because then there'll be more options when I actually click on the trend line. So I double click on that trend line. I'm going to select logarithmic because that is the type of curve that we're looking at. And there we go. That is my trend line for replicate one. I've set up another sheet here. Um, basically, all you do is press a little plus and that's going to give you another sheet. So I've got a, a um, empty sheet here and I'm going to start to move our data for each of our replicates over. So this is replicate one. I'm going to put it in the second row 
so I can make sure that I know that this is replicate one or merge these cells. All right, here's my area for my second replicate. For this one, I'm just going to grab these two columns because I already know what I programmed the Lycor with, and that's in here. Hang on, let's put it down here. And for this one, the last measurement wasn't done. Um, we'll go for this one. And also the last measurement wasn't done with this particular plant, but that is okay. Okay, so um, let's do another scatter plot. First of all, I'm just gonna make sure I know that this is for Benth 2. And this one is for Benth 3. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go up and I'm going to say insert scatter plot. All right, and now it's time to select our data. So instead of one series, um, we now have three series that we need to put the data in for. So we go select data and we're going to put our first series in. Remember, our first series was called Benth 1. The X values are the CI and the Y values are A. Let's put another one in. We'll do Benth 2. X values are CI. Y values are A. And our last one is bent three. We put our X values in. And Y values. Okay. And there we go. We've got three scatter plots. They look extremely similar. Um, what we can do is we can have a look at our data. Um, we can add a chart element and I want to add a trend line. Um, my trend line, I just say linear and then I can get a few more options here. So I want a logarithmic trend line. Um, and then I'm going to press on the green little um, dots and I'm going to add another one. Click back on that trend line. Let's go for logarithmic. Wow, that's almost identical. That's really good. Um, and let's go to the red line. Sorry, the red points and add the trend line in again. Beautiful. Okay. They are very, very similar. So we can see that our measurements, we've equilibrated our plant really well. The plants behave very similarly for each, similarly for each curve. So we can pretty much say that the, the measurements for that particular plant have been quite accurate. So the steps that we did for C3, for the C4 plant, Ceteria. Um, I've also done the same thing. So I've got my three uh, scatter plots for each replicate, and I've also combined the data to have a look at the technical replicates and how good they are. Now, just as an aside, you can see this logarithmic trend line isn't uh, a brilliant fit, like the R squared values are um, down a bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use this just to compare the two plants. Now, to prepare ourselves for preparing the type of the two types of plants, we're going to put all of our data together into a graph like this. So essentially all I've done is I've taken each column, each of the CI um, values, 
and just copied and paste, uh, pasted them down here. Same with this one down below. And I did the same for the A columns. So I get something like this. <clears throat> and then I did a scatter plot exactly the same as we did before. And this basically just puts all of our data together <clears throat> in one graph um, for our C4 plant. And I also did the same for our Benthamiana, which is our C3 plant. And I'll just now build my scatter plot. I'm just going to call it Benth C3. And values, the X values are going to be the CI. And the Y values are my assimilation. And there we go. Okay, so that is my scatter plot for my C3. And there's my logarithmic line. Let's compare our C3 and C4 plants. So we're going to open a new workbook and we're going to grab our data. And I might put another row in here so I can label the C3 and C4 columns. So that was C4. Let's go to the C3 workbook. Okay. remember those units so I'm going to copy and paste them over there and then I, I will um, <clears throat> write over them and this is our C3 data and what we're going to do next you guessed it we are going to do a scatter plot Awesome. So there we go. So it's our C4 versus C3 ACI curves. <clears throat> and now it's time for you guys to discuss the differences in these two curves. So what's the plant actually doing? What's happening to the carbon assimilation rate as the intracellular carbon dioxide increases? And what we can do is we can compare the curve that we get for canola for our ACI um, with C3 and C4 to see if we can determine whether canola is actually a C3 or a C4 plant. So I've highlighted the columns that you need just so it's easy to find um, for your ACI curve. So now it's your turn to build your scatter plot for canola and compare it with your scatter plots showing the C3 and C4 plants and see if you can determine which type of photosynthesis system canola has, either C3 or C4. Okay, so hopefully you've done your canola ACI curve. What you can do is you can um, copy and paste it side by side with your C4 versus C3 ACI curves, and we can look at the features. All right, if we have a look at our C4 curve, we've got a really steep, steep beginning of the curve, and it flattens out very quickly. And with our C3, we've got more of a gradual increase. Um, in the slope and it flattens out again. So let's have a look at the canola. Is it a very steep um, slope in the beginning or is it a gradual? 
So the answer is obviously that it's quite gradual. And so this is a feature of C3 plants. <clears throat> it also flattens out. And what's interesting is that canola seems to flatten out around a, an assimilation of 30, um, whereas these guys are um, flattening out under 25. So because we've only done one plant for canola, we can't tell whether this is like a feature of canola's photosynthesis. Um, but we can definitely draw the conclusion that canola is a C3 plant. Okay, I want you guys to spend some time um, discussing other features of this graph. Write them down, discuss with your teacher, and make sure that you guys get a really good idea of the features of C3, C4, and the different slopes that they have in the ACI curve.